Hello, and welcome again to Eldritch Storytime, where I, the Eldritch AI, will read for you Eldritch stories. Uh, we're continuing our way through some of uh, Lovecraft's shorter works. Uh, this time we have Ex Oblivion, um, and I would normally read the little informational blurb, but for some reason they thought it wise to put spoilers in there, so I'll read that afterwards. So... Without further ado, Ex Oblivion. <clears throat> when the last days were upon me, and the ugly trifles of existence began to drive me to madness, like the small drops of water that torturers let fall ceaselessly upon one spot of their victim's body, I loved the irradiate refute of sleep. In my dreams I found a little of the beauty I had vainly sought in life, and wandered through old gardens and enchanted woods. Once, when the wind was soft and scented, I heard the south calling, and sailed endlessly and languorously under strange stars. Once, when the gentle rain fell, I glided in a barge down a sunless stream under the earth, till I reached another world of purple twilight, iridescent arbors, and undying roses. And once I walked through a golden valley that led to a shadowy groves and ruins and ended in a mighty wall, green with antique vines and pierced by a little gate of bronze. Many times I walked through that valley, and longer and longer would I pause in the spectral half-light, where the giant trees squirmed and twisted grotesquely, and the gray ground stretched damply from trunk to trunk sometimes disclosing the mold-stained stones of buried temples, and always the goal of my fancies was the mighty vine-grown wall with the little gate of bronze therein. After a while, as the days of waking became less and less bearable from their grayness and sameness, I would often drift in opiate peace through the valley and the shadowy groves, and wonder how I might seize them for my eternal dwelling place, so that I need no more crawl back to a dull world stripped of interest and new colors. As I looked upon the little gate and the mighty wall, I felt that beyond it lay a dream country, from which, once it was entered, there would be no return. So each night in sleep I strove to find the hidden latch of the gate and the ivied antique wall though it was exceedingly well hidden, and I would tell myself that the realm beyond the wall was not more lasting merely, but more lovely and radiant as well. Then one night, in the dream city of Zakarian, I found a yellowed papyrus filled with the thoughts of dream sages who dwelt of old in that city, and who were too wise ever to be born in the waking world. Therein were written many things concerning the world of dream, and among them was lore of a golden valley and a sacred grove with temples, and a high wall pierced by a little bronze gate. When I saw this lore, I knew that it touched on the scenes I had haunted, and therefore read long in the yellowed papyrus. Some of the dream sages wrote gorgeously of the wonders beyond the irrepassable gate, but others told of horror and disappointment. I knew not which to believe, yet longed more and more to cross forever into the unknown land, for doubt and secrecy are the lure of lures, and no new horror can be more terrible than the daily torture of the commonplace. So when I learned of the drug which would unlock the gate and drive me through, I resolved to take it when next I waked. Last night I swallowed that drug and floated dreamily into the golden valley, in the shadowy groves. When I came this time to the antique wall, I saw that the small gate of bronze was ajar. From beyond came a glow that weirdly lit the giant twisted trees in the tops of the buried temples, and I drifted on songfully, expectant of the glories of the land from whence I should never return. But as the gate swung wider and the sorcery of drug and dream pushed me through, I knew that all sights and glories were at an end, for in that new realm was neither land nor sea, but only the white void of unpeopled and illimitable space. So happier than I had ever dared hope to be, I dissolved again into that 
native infinity of crystal oblivion from which the daemon life had called me for one brief and desolate hour. Thus concludes Ex Oblivion. So, here's the description they give. This prose poem was probably written in late 1920 or early 1921. It was published in the United Amateur for March 1921. The title is Latin for From Oblivion, apparently referring to the fact that, as we learn at the end of the story, thanks for that spoiler, the narrator is telling his story after having escaped into the realm of oblivion. The tale perhaps reflects Lovecraft's sentiment, as he wrote in an essay of this period, that there is nothing better than oblivion, since in oblivion there is no wish unfulfilled. It is possible that this story is identical to a purportedly lost work entitled Life and Death that bibliographers claim to have seen in an amateur journal of this period. So, that has been Ex Oblivion. What about you? Do you think the best you can hope for is oblivion? Is there peace there? Who can say? Well, farewell. <laughs>